here we go. Hi, Adam. It's uh, Mary Ellen from LearnBridge Online. Tell us what we're going to do today. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, Hi. everybody. Well, we're going to look at a hand from my uh, Thursday Declare Play class. All right. Well, let me just pull that in for you. Yeah. So my favorite auction in bridge, one no Trump, pass, pass, pass. And we get to play my favorite contract in bridge, one no Trump. That is your favorite, huh? Okay. It is. It is hard to defend and hard to play. Um, True. So here we are. Um, we got a pretty good dummy. Yep. What's what's our thought process? What's the first thing you're thinking about, Mary Ellen, um, when you know the lead is made and the dummy comes down? Well, I'm always thinking about how many losers, what's my point count, and what's my plan? You know, where am I strong? Where am I weak? That kind of yeah. thing. So in no Trump, I like to start counting my sure winners, my off okay. the top. I can take these and run home winners. And so on this hand, I would count three clubs, one heart, one spade. Now, why do you count your winners instead of your losers, though? Okay, so in a suit contract, I count losers. And the reason is that our tools available in a suit contract are kind of based around getting rid of losers. We can rough them. We can pitch a loser. But the problem is we don't have those tools available in no Trump. Right. If I throw away a loser, but the opponents get in, they can still run the suit because I don't have a, a, a Trump suit to stop them. And so it's you can count losers in uh, a suit contract, but I think counting losers is easier. But in a, uh, in a Trump, in a no Trump contract, you really want to start by focusing on your winners. That's and then you, know. you do need to keep in mind, okay, if I lose the lead, how many tricks can they take? Yep. Uh, we need to think about their tricks as well. But I'm focusing on my tricks. Right. So I started with five tricks. Three clubs, two aces is five. Where do we see potential for extra tricks? What do you think? For extra tricks? Um... You know, um, the clubs look pretty good. Maybe, or maybe yeah. you could, maybe you could get an extra trick there. Yeah, we have four three fits in three suits in clubs, hearts, and spades. And so when we have a four three fit, I'm always thinking about the possibility of a length trick if the suit splits three three. Right. Right. So if right. clubs are three three or spades or hearts. Right. I could easily have a length trick there. Um, in diamonds, right, they're leading diamonds. That's their suit. But I have the queen, jack, 10 and the dummy. Right. That should eventually set up as a winner. Right. Uh, right. Which would get one. me up to six. Right. And then, you know, in hearts and spades, in hearts, that jack and that nine, they could be good cards if the opponents lead them. But the suit I'm most excited about is spades. In okay. spades, I have a classic double finesse. I have the ace, jack, 10, nine, missing the king and the queen, and I want to finesse twice and hope that East has one of the honors. Right, okay. The, the main problem on the hand is that I only have one sure entry to the dummy, the king of clubs. But if the opponent set up uh, they're diamonds, they're going to have to give me an entry there. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay. The other thing I'm paying attention to is the fact that the lead is the deuce of diamonds, right? They've led my weakest suit, but leading the deuce, they probably have a four card suit. So the diamonds are probably four, four, meaning that, you know, I'm probably losing only three diamonds. Now, so, can, you, can you guess from that lead, maybe they have the ace or the king? Very likely. But honestly, it doesn't really matter okay. where the diamond honors are. Ah, there's the ace. All right, there's the ace. And another one comes back. And they play a third one. Okay, now I have to make my first real decision of the hand. What do I throw? 
Well, you wanted to promote those spades. That's right. Why not? I'm hoping for length tricks in spades and clubs. So if I throw a spade or a club, it could be a trick. So I'm definitely throwing a heart here. Okay. And so now I'm going to play a spade. And question is, do I play the 10 or do I play the deuce? I would play... You know, I'd probably play the... It's a tough one. Yeah, that's right? a tough one. Maybe the... I'm not sure. Right. Well, We're used to playing the 10 in this situation. And the reason that we would play the 10 is that if the finesse wins and it holds the trick, we're still in the dummy. And it. so that's what I would do if I had like ace, queen, jack in my hand. But here, this is a double finesse. I'm expecting the first finesse to lose. And so I want to hold on to that 10 for the second finesse. So ah. I'm going to play the deuce, right? Okay. I'm hoping that these honors are split. So I'll play the jack and it loses to the queen. And they're going to cash their good diamond. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine, right? I'll just throw a right. heart from both hands. Okay. Right. And all right, well, they play a spade for me. Well, that makes life even easier, ah. right? If right. they had played yeah. a heart, like they probably should, I would cross over to the king of clubs. I would lead the ten of spades and take that finesse, right? right. Once they do this for me. Uh, oh, that's can, that's a gift. Well, you know, I was going to get the finesse anyway. Right. And so now it's just a matter of do either of these black suits split, right? If right. I uh, stop and re recount, I have two tricks in the bag. And I have three clubs is five. Ace of hearts is six. Ace of spades is seven. And so now I'm going for over tricks. Yep. And I'm just going to see if either of these suits split. Right. So. Good. That one doesn't split. That one doesn't split. <laughs> it was being tricky with the king, but. Yeah. You know, I'm taking my ace. Yep. Oh, I have to play a card. All right. And he has a heart, but this guy had a club. Yep. Um, but you and so, it. you know, I took my seven tricks. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, here, I'll just uh, stop this here. Yeah. Yeah. So starting by counting your sure winners and then thinking about where can I develop extra tricks, whether they be length tricks or honor tricks, and then also worrying about what are the opponent's tricks. Right. And you want to be specific about that, not, oh, geez, they can take a bunch of diamonds. That's not helpful, but they can take three diamonds. Oh, all right. Well, three diamonds. That's no problem. Right. I can afford to lose three diamonds. Right. Right. Now, that's great advice, though, how to yeah. play it. So. Yeah. And this is exactly the format, basically, of the Thursday class where I present the hand and you get to play it out yourself. And then we go over it with exactly this. Uh, emphasis on thought process. Right. I love that you do talk about that because it's all about judgment and thought it process. Is. And, so. you know, there's no right and wrong on a lot of these hands, right? I bring in right. hands from real life. I don't, uh, I don't manufacture lesson hands. And I like hands with ambiguity where it's not, okay, well, you have to do it this way. This is the right way to do it. Sometimes, you know, this is probably what you should do. But a lot of the time it's like, well, this could work and that could work. And well, yeah. And it's great to know, like talk it through the options. That's I right. That. And it's, if your thought process is solid, you're going to get these right more often than not. That's, right. that's my philosophy. I love it. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone. Doing this with me, Mary Ellen. Thank you, Adam. It was wonderful. It really helped me. So great. hope it helps someone else. Very Thanks good. Thanks so much. All right. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.